and welcome to another video in the Forest Wanderer costume series. This is the last video where I will be showing you how to make the periwinkle cloak. And this cloak is completely lined with fur. That is faux fur, because I think, I don't know how legal and expensive real fur would be, but um, I don't know, maybe it was worth looking into. So today I'm gonna show you how I made this cloak. It's really a, it was really a short process. It only took me like two days two or three days to make, um, but here is how the process went. I started with six yards of cotton muslin. I first bleached the material to remove the natural color. Then after rinsing it, I made a dye bath over the stove with salt, a little bit of rose quartz and indigo writ dye, and three gallons of water. Test the dye. And in goes the fabric, still wet. After achieving a color that was a few shades darker than I wanted, I rewashed and dried the fabric. And this is what it turned out like. The lighting in this room isn't very good, but you'll be able to see it, more of it later. Next, you need to measure the length of your cloak. I went for a 55 inch cloak from my neck to just above my ankles. All right, time to talk patterns again. So how you draft a pattern for a cape. So if you're looking for a cape that has a lot of drama and flair, this is you by the way, you're going to want to make it uh, you want to cut it in the shape of a circle. And the more circular it is, you can do a half circle or you can do a full circle. If you do a full circle, it will close down the front as well. Um, I like that because preferably it keeps me warmer when my cape goes all the way around. So that's what I'm going to do with this cape. Um, so what you're going to want to do is take your tape measure and you're going to measure from your shoulder down to where, whatever length you want it to be. I stopped it just a little bit above my ankles. And then you're gonna take that measurement and then you're gonna cut out a circle with a radius of that measurement. And that's pretty much all, all there is to it. Um, however, when I was cutting out my pattern, my fabric was not a generous 60 inches as I thought it was going to be. So I ended up having the back half of the circle be 55 inches, which was this measurement here, and since the width of the fabric was 45 inches, the front half was 45 inches, so I had some panels. I had, let's see, I had four, I cut four panels, and then the front, the width of the fabric was only 45 inches, so I kind of tapered it off, so I had these two panels kind of tapering to 45 inches, and all that's gonna do is make it so that when I wear the cape, it will be long in the back, but it will kind of drape like this in the front and kind of like have a uh, tapered look to it. So these are my feet. And then I'm going to have like cool slits in the sides where I, put it, where I can put my hands out. That's how you feel when you wear a cool cape. So I cut out my panels, however I ended up removing the first two front panels later because it looked better that way. It was just too bulky and the hem was like a little bit uneven so I ended up just ripping those two panels out anyway. And it's not like a full circle cloak anymore, but it's mostly a circle. It's like 85% there if it was like a pie chart, I guess. Next, cut your pattern pieces out of the faux fur. 
making sure that the nap of the fur is laying in the right direction. I had the nap of my fur facing down towards the hem, but you can always brush the nap on a slight angle if you need to. I had some of my pattern pieces on a slight angle because it was kind of impossible for them to all face the same direction. I also purchased six yards of the faux fur and this one actually did have a generous 60 inch width. And then I ended up using most of it. Um, it was just the way the, the pattern pieces were positioned, I needed that extra length. When cutting out these pieces, run a hairbrush along the freshly cut edges to pick up those loose hairs or else it will be a very tragic mess to clean up later. Here's my collection. Onto the sewing. Sew or serge all the fashion fabric panels together and take care to make sure that all your edges are lined up properly. I forgot to do this with my fur and it was such a mess. I had to completely disassemble the fur and then reassemble it again twice. When you come to the side seams, pin an opening for your arm to stick through comfortably unless you don't want to. This is more of an optional thing. I just kind of like the cloaks that have the little arm slits. Mark that on both sides of both fabrics and then serge or sew that seam, skipping over the armhole opening. Then I sewed my fur on the sewing machine because I was afraid the serger would make a mess of the fur. As long as your good sides are facing towards each other, you shouldn't have to worry about the fur getting caught. After sewing the fur, you can tease the seams with a hairbrush to hide them. Here's the before and the after. Then I attached this lace trim to the hem of my fashion fabric for decor. And then sew good sides facing good sides, the front opening seams joining the periwinkle and fur lining. Then I matched up the hems and then I sewed that together, good sides facing. So basically what you're doing is you're lining up your lining and your fabric, good sides facing good sides, and you're just sew sewing along every single line except for the neck hole opening. When you're done, flip it right side out and then cut and stay stitch that collar. Okay, so fun story, I actually purchased six whole yards of cotton canvas for this project and I think up till now, I don't think I've used any of it, but I'm using, I'm using it now as a collar interfacing, so that, that's all I needed really. So I'm wrapping up the, this cape and I'm making the collar and I originally only planned for the collar to be just a plain white collar, but I felt bad for not actually doing any embroidery for this cape. My original plan was to embroider the entire hem of the cape, but I didn't really like the way my sample turned out and the trim just worked better, so I didn't do any embroidery, but I thought I could at least probably embroider the, ca the collar, so here is one final embroidery montage.
Once that was done, I surged my collar together with the canvas interfacing and the lining, and then I sewed it down to my cloak. For those finishing touches, stitch down the collar on the inside, and then turn and slip stitch the armhole openings, and then attach a lovely clasp to the top. And now, we are finally finished with all of the sewing for this project. that video. So this concludes the Forest Wanderer costume series. We are all done with it. So in a few weeks I should have, I need to do some filming, but then I should be able to post the reveal video and it's gonna be great. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will give you some more updates about my sewing projects later and love you, bye! I first bleached I first bleached... I first bleached the material. <laughs>
microwave. I forgot about that. And here is to hoping and praying that I'm not wasting my precious too many dollars a yard fabric. <laughs> I believe in you. That I think they upcharge just because it's seasonal. If you're wondering what this trim is supposed to be, um, I don't really know. It's I think it's I think these are leaves. It's, I don't know. It just it looks good. It's like a jumble of foliage of some sort. Perhaps ice patterns. Or maybe maybe like um, the the graph of a of a very strange function. <coughs> Don't think that's gonna work. It just bleeds. All right, <coughs> keepers. Someone <coughs> help. Whoops, that's a zigzag stitch. I see you, chicken. You cannot hide from me. Oh my gosh, that thing is so creepy. Come on, guys. Oh, watch the mud, watch the mud. It, it hides in yonder cave. It, look, uh, I'm unarmed. Hello? You can't see it, but it is looking right at me. It's so big. The beast. What ho? A foe? I'm coming for you, beast! Charred! She's, uh... She's not in the mood to play games today, I guess. Alright, someone answer me this. Why cuddle with your bay when you can cuddle with the twelve wolves that you slaughtered with your bare hands? It's fine! I'm distracted again. <laughs> Attention, YouTube! Love is not real, you- <laughs> Attention, good folks of YouTube. Love is fake. Fickle. Fickle And actually, love does not exist. In case you're wondering, there's no such thing as true love. The end.